it's a good way to start the uh, start the meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so welcome everybody. It's seven thirty. We will kick off the board of health meeting for the sixteenth of November. As we normally do, if we could impose on a quick little update, looks like there's been a lot of activity and upcoming activity for for vaccinations and. Uh, yeah. Workers. So. Um on some positive notes, so we did hold our first 5 to 11 um, pediatric COVID clinic this past weekend. Um, so huge kudos to the health department staff, um, one for working after hours, but also for kind of putting it all together. Um, we always joke that it's kind of like planning a wedding every time. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of moving parts. There's some things that we can't do until the very end, which gives us a little bit of anxiety for us type A individuals. <laughs> Um, but everything went off without a hitch. We held this one at Blackburn Hall. Trish had reached out to Walpole Pediatrics initially. Um, it was a great partnership. We were able to have a lot of our vaccinators be um, from Walpole Pediatrics. So I think those individuals, 5 to 11, that were apprehensive to get the shot, it kind of helped to have a familiar face, even at registration, at the vaccination. Um, we had a few screamers, a few runners, um, but... Our volunteers were definitely well equipped. Um, we had Rebel, um, the community resource dog, which you're all familiar with present. Um, so that was amazing. Um, we do plan on having Rebel and some of his, uh, her friends there for the upcoming clinics. And then we've also reached out to the um, school drama department and they are going to have some students who actually are excited to volunteer. They did the um, Seussical um, musical recently and they still have the costumes. So they will have a few students um, showing up at the clinics in costume. Hopefully it won't scare the, the children, but potentially to kind of lighten the mood. So we, we got a lot of positive feedback from the clinic. Um, I think the main selling point is having the activities because they do have to wait that 15 minute observation period following the clinic. So providing some snacks, providing some arts and crafts, some music, um, and just kind of keeping them occupied. So great success. We vaccinated about 250 individuals that are 5 to 11. This coming weekend, we have two more clinics, Saturday and Sunday, and then we'll have the second doses um, for those, the one this past Saturday and the other two in December. So um, all positive things. I, I think if if anyone had heard about the clinic, I think it was all, um, you know, positive feedback. So it's great that we're able to host these clinics. It's awesome. And I see the, um, um, knowing the news rates, as far as the uh, positivity rate jumped up a little from the last resort, or last we report. We definitely I are seeing an uptick in cases, which I think is normal in the case where people are coming indoors, people are gathering more. Um, you do have the holidays among us. So I, I hate to say it, but I don't think it's going to plateau. I think it's going to continue to rise. Um, so I think just reminding individuals just of, of personal protection, being mindful if you're sick, you stay home, wearing a mask when you're in an indoor environment um, in close proximity to others. And again, being vaccinated um, because they are obviously showing that when you're vaccinated, even though there are breakthrough cases, it's far less of a chance. And obviously um, the symptoms and hospitalizations are, are very minimal, so. Okay. When do you expect to have the over 75 vaccine ready? For like the booster, Carol? Yes, uh-huh. So the booster, we are we have a scheduled clinic for Monday, December 13th. And that will be from 10 to two at the Council on Aging. Um, once we have the link for registration, it will be similar to the clinics that we held in the spring. There'll be an online registration. Uh, we will make it available to um, carry uh, our COA director. So then that way she can assist um, with those online registrations as well as the general public that would be eligible for it. So again, it will be Monday, December 13th from 10 to two at the Council on Aging and the registration link will follow. Thank you. You're welcome. Good, thanks so much, appreciate it. The next item on our agenda is um, approval of minutes from October 19th. If there were any edits, comments, or changes to it from anybody? I didn't, I didn't find any. Did you find anything, Carol? I thought we had um, another guest at, at the meeting. No? 
I remember crying twice. Crying. The first one was over Red Wing. I, I cried over that one. And I cried over um, a family who had a tenant who would not leave and was causing problems. That was two months ago. Oh, that was two months ago. Okay. Thank that was you. My first appearance. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, wait. It's good to see you smiling. Things must be happy well, for you. Well, it, it never hurts to smile, <laughs> no <right>. matter what. <laughs> You're right. Thank you, my mistake. So uh, I'll make a motion in regards to the October 19th, 2021 meeting, the Board of Health approves the minutes um, as is. I second that. A motion has been made and seconded. Any other comments? And we will vote. We have, uh, so Stefan could not make it, right? Okay, so we took it enough. Perfect. Uh, Carol? Aye. And Mona. Aye. And I, three zero zero. The next item on our on our agenda was the pool variance. Is there anybody here for the pool variance? Any objections to us? I don't us? see anyone on the call for the pool variance. Um, I have spoken with them, and as you can see, the um, what they submitted it was very thorough. Um, we do go out and inspect the pool. Um, they, it's. It is for their students um, who are, tend to be special needs, and so it's a therapeutic pool. Um, as we, as you heard at some of our other recent vari variance requests, um, it is hard to get lifeguards. Um, they have staffed the pool with lifeguards in the past. They're hoping to get a variance for this, um, just because they're having difficulty hiring lifeguards, and they really would like to offer this service for their students. Um, the pool is three to four feet deep. Um, each student, um, based on um, what they've written, it's a one to two ratio at the minimum. Um, there's at least one, um, one of those staff is at least CPR first aid certified and they have an annual training for their staff. They keep the individuals in the pool to 12, even though um, the capacity for the pool is actually significantly larger than that. Um, and they do have a CPO that monitors the pool. Um, they noted that they have a camera system that monitors. Um, they know they'll have to add those additional signage. Um, they do have an AED in the area um, and they do have nurses and they'll have one um, near the pool area when it's in use. Um, so they're just looking um, to be able to um, not have a lifeguard. I think like if they can get a lifeguard, they definitely prefer one, um, but just the hours that they don't um, and the school is operating, um, they still wanna allow their students to use the pool. I'm very impressed with all the documentation they sent us. And if I had a child who had special needs at that school, I would be much comforted by, by all this information. So I would agree. And knowing that all these controls are in place, um, the ratio of student to, to, to bather, I mean, this is, this is a good example of, I think, where our variants would, could and would come into play. <clears throat> and the, you know, the other, other pools we've done have been a little, um, a little more of our judgment, but I think this seems like this is appropriate, so. Uh, so I have a question though, um, Fravika. Um, so so the students, right, um, who they're gonna be escorted with? The nurse? The staff, and so at least one of the staff, if not more of the staff that are with the students are gonna be CPR first aid certified. So this the, none of the students can use the, the pool without staff. Okay. So it's gonna be one staff for two kids? Is this how the ratio no, is? Possibly two staff for one child. There will always Each be at least must be one staff at least member. one to two ratio. Um, okay. Okay, okay. But they're not, you know, trained lifeguards, just like nurses and PCR. Correct. CPR, first aid. First aid. Um, and obviously because they are needs like, and it is a pool, the staff would be appropriately trained on, on the needs of that student and the safety of that student as well in the pool. Right, and it's only and, three to four feet. Okay. And these are the staff that have been going into the, like that have been using the pool with the, with the students even when the lifeguard is present. So it, the only change would be that there'd be no lifeguard present. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Any other discussions? Does anybody wanna make a motion? I'll make a motion regarding the pool variance for the education co cooperative 
the Board of Health has no concerns at this time. So we're granting the variance rate? Right? Yes. Thank you. I'll second that. Motion is made and seconded. Thank you. Um, one question, is there anything that we would put in? I know they normally have a lifeguard. Um, I assume you think that they would prefer obviously to have one, um, but this just gives them the opportunity to, to not have it. Would we ever put something that, um, actually, I guess we can't really say if there was one available because they would be jumping on them right away. So, um, okay, sorry, side note. I think we're good. Motion. You will have to um, file an indemnification form. The standard indemnification that we would request. Gotcha. All right. The motions were made and edited to include the indemnification form and seconded. Any other comment? And we will vote. Carol? Aye. And Mona? Aye. And aye. So the variance has been approved. Thank you. 300. Next on our list is Red Wing Diner Update. And I think we so, have Liam here. Yeah, so I'll turn over to Liam in a second. We actually haven't connected as much as we have before the other meetings, but I actually was out there this morning to do an inspection. Um, there has definitely, um, regarding cleanliness on the floor and um, rodent droppings, definitely significant improvement. I did not see, I, I don't think I saw any droppings today. Um, that was very exciting. Um, Lucas, the head chef there, says they have a cleaning company that comes in every morning, um, does the floor. Um, I know not this past weekend, unfortunately, there, there were some, um, a couple caught in traps, not very many, two, I believe, but two weeks, th the week prior to that and the week prior to that, um, there were no mice caught. So I think that's been the longest. So that's, I think there's been great progress. I know that there's still some work that's going to be done. Um, I spoke with Lucas today when I was out there, the dish um, machine that we discussed last month still has not been replaced. Um, I am going to be also reaching out to Ecolab who should be replacing that as everyone's aware. Um, it is hard to find staff. Companies like Ecolab are in a similar situation. So it appears that they, they are the holdup to getting it replaced. Um, and there's a few other facility repairs that are in the process of being scheduled. Um, but other than that, I'll turn it over to you, Liam, um, to give any other updates. Uh, as far as updates go, as far as equipment, we have replaced our ice machine. That's been the newest thing yes. that uh, is going on to be replaced. Uh, that is uh, a major upgrade. That in and of itself has taken weeks and weeks uh, just to get, and we still don't have a new condenser for on top of the roof. Uh, that's about the only new equipment. Um, it has been absolutely a Ecolab issue. Um, I have reached out to Ecolab twice on my own. Lucas is actually the one that uh, does most of the uh, contact with Ecolab. Uh, I believe there was an issue today uh, when Rika was out and it, Ecolab was down today to correct two issues, I believe. Uh, Lucas had sent me that in a text, uh, Rika, and I uh, had a hard time tracking down your phone number in my phone, but I will get that to you uh, before, I guess it is the end of business, but before uh, I go back to the restaurant tonight, I will dig up your phone number and send that over to you. Uh, we continue with weekly, um, it is truly a battle, uh, us against the mice. Uh, my pest control guy is here uh, every single week. We go through hundreds of glue boards. There are glue boards everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's glue boards. We, I was so disappointed. Saturday when there was two mice caught because I knew I was coming before the board uh, today and I knew I had weeks and weeks of no mice caught, no mice caught, no mice caught. <clears throat> um, we did catch two. Two were down in the basement. One was a juvenile that was underneath my soda thing and sometimes they go for that sweet syrupy stuff uh, that sometimes uh, can be around your bag in the box system. And the other one, uh, surprisingly enough, was out in front of my office. And if anyone's seen my beautiful palatial office, it's right next to the furnace. Uh, I think that one might have actually <laughs> been looking for some heat. Yeah, I do. I have a sub pump in my office. I like to refer to it as a water feature. Uh, other than that, uh, we, I, I do have, somebody is in there every single day and these people are not red wing people. These people are here to do nothing but, uh, clean and to do, uh, mitigation. Uh, uh, that's what they were hired for. And that's what they do. Uh, and they are not necessarily like mopping the dining room. It's not like that kind of cleaning. Uh, I do have, uh, Mr. Martinez, who uh, is my daytime dishwasher. He does mop. 
uh, everything in the morning with these people that come in, this person that comes in is just there to do nothing but uh, hard cleaning in the basement, up underneath equipment, things like that, that sometimes my staff doesn't have time to get to, but that is being done on a daily basis. Uh, that has been added. Nothing has really changed as far as the intensity that we're going after this, the intensity that we have to keep up with it. I, I think in a text message uh, last week uh, when we had zero mice caught, Rika had mentioned that that was uh, somewhat of an achievement because it's getting colder and they're trying to find uh, warmth inside, which is why I think we did find one next to my palatial office uh, downstairs in the basement. Uh, but I mean, fingers crossed, things have been good. We're not seeing droppings. It's not stuff, you know, you know, blatant evidence when we're coming in in the morning. Um, we haven't been able to open on uh, game days. So that is a good time on Saturday nights uh, when, when, when we're gonna be closed on Sundays and Mondays. It's me and the whole kitchen crew. We're putting glue boards everywhere. Uh, and that helps us uh, know if they're coming in, where they're coming in, what, where they're being. And we have been so lucky that uh, we have been getting so few mice. Um, it is getting to be winter time. I know our task is going to get harder, but we think we're up for it. Good work. Thank you. That's all I got. <laughs> Much for the update. That's great. And Good to hear some progress. I know you're, it's a battle and a half. And uh, Thank you, sir. <laughs> all right. Any questions for Liam? Any actions we have? Obviously, keeping up the great work and uh, pedal to the metal. Anything we want to add or uh, comment to? Would we ask Liam to, uh, to grace us next month just as another update? Would we mind? And would you mind doing that? Whatever you say, sir. Please, if you wouldn't mind, that'd be great to see you again. You can correct us on our agenda and keep us online. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> awesome. I mean, to, what is the date of the next meeting? So as of right now, we had it down as the 21st of okay. December, I believe sure. the, the board voted on because we'll just have the abbreviated schedule we'll just meet once that month. But if anything changes, Liam, we will, I'll reach out to you. Certainly. 21st is fine with me. I'll be happy to appear again. Very much appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir. All right. 745 appointment, uh, 770 Washington Street. The um, failed septic system. Do we have anybody on the line for the 770 Washington Street? I actually don't see um, Mario Gomes on the line, unfortunately. Um, we have been emailing today, so I'd hoped you'd be on the call. Um, so I'm just following up. I know this was on our agenda um, in January um, that the 770 Washington had a failed um, cesspool. Um, the owner uh, had requested not to conduct a title an official Title V because the system... Um, appeared to be in failure and rather than spend the money for an official Title V, he wanted to save that to upgrade the system. And we um, decided to give him the health department nine months um, to do soil testing or begin the process of um, initiating sewer hookup. And then um, nine months after that, um, so a total of 18 months, either have an upgraded um, system installed um, or have been connected to town sewer. Um, this went in front of the board because um, the owner um, requested um, additional time from the board. Um, he did not attend that hearing as well. Um, and the board voted um, to um, follow the timeline that the health department had outlined. So I emailed um, the owner in June to let him know that we were coming up three months out from that initial nine month period, um, didn't hear back, um, finally heard back in September after emailing him um, on September 20th to let him know that um, that week um, it was the deadline to see if he was working on scheduling um, uh, soil testing or initiating the sewer hookup. Um, he reached out to us asking for more information to go over the process. Um, he came into our office on the 29th to discuss um, and asked to go in front of the Board of Health um, in November um, because we, we, would, we had mentioned to him we would bring this in front of you because he hasn't complied with the first part of the order. Um, he asked us to push the meeting to the November 
to this meeting um, so that he could attend. Um, and in the meantime, he said he would reach out to John Glossa because he's looking to subdivide the property. So currently it's one lot. He's looking to divide it into two. So he's been, he's hoping to wait to connect to um, sewer or upgrade the system um, until he has divided the lot. Um, so he's been working with John Glossa. John, I, I spoke with John Glossa as well. And based on the email that the owner sent me today, um, the recommendation is that um, connecting to town sewer would be the better option. There is a hookup there for him already. It appears that for 770, you, they wouldn't even need to go to the street. Um, I spoke to the engineering department. So it should be a fairly um, easy um, thing for the owner to do. And then if the owner wanted to subdivide, um, he could he could then extend to that um, additional property. There might be a, some additional work that would be needed, such as um, they might need a manhole cover, but that is on the engineering department. Um, I just, I did spoke to, I did speak to the town engineer to get a little bit of information on the requirements. So we're just here because the owner didn't comply with the first um, nine months. Um, according to the Board of Health order and our um, order letter, he still has until um, mid to end of May to either upgrade the system or hook up to sewer. Um, so that is the, the background. So if he decides to um, have the system connected to the town sewer, would he still be required to do the first part? Um, or that's the town's? No, event? so the, he, he it was just the, the original nine months was for him to have done the research of what does he need to do to initiate um, sewer hookup. So we more or less now at this point do have an idea, um, but he needs to decide which way he wants to go, whether he wants to do sewer and, and he needs to get a little bit more information from engineering to bring to us um, to say what that would involve. Um, and then the second part would be to make sure that by May he connects. Um, our concern is that come May, we're going to be in a similar situation. Um, so we were looking to perhaps um, set a date earlier in May that he would need to provide a timeline. Um, sewer, uh, I mean, the um, town engineer said that it, connecting to sewer, the, the piece that would take the longest is getting an installer um, to put in, put in the line. Um, so sometime before that May 24th date, having contracted with an installer to put in the system because installers might book a little bit further out um, to already have that scheduled so that we know it will occur. And what if he decides to go with the town? Who should we, uh, he should contact the water and sewer department to do that? So you should speak with the engineering department. There's a letter attached to this and um, it's, photocopied and I can't even read the letter. What does the letter have to do with anything? The, was this the? That's the, that's the original letter from back in December of last year. Just like kind of requesting for an extension from the original um, timeline. So that's the owner's letter that he emailed to us um, requesting the hearing in front of the board. Okay, so 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 in other words, we're way beyond that letter. Right? Yes. So th okay. what was sent was the the letter that was sent in December um, to the owner, and then his appeal to that letter, um, requesting a hearing in front of the board um, to get more time um, to upgrade the failed system due to financial hardship. Right? I think that's no. Um, it might have been partially, but also um, because he is hoping to subdivide. Um, and build a new house. So he was hoping to delay um, until he has the property subdivided because he, he didn't actually want to pay for a system that might then have to be adjusted um, if he subdivides. I did speak to John Glossa, who he has been working with. Um, and John did say that if he were to put in a septic system, they could design the system and, and place it in a way that wouldn't impact the subdivision so that it would be put on one of the lots so one of the properties could use that system in the future and then they would just need to put in a second system but again and the same thing with sewer like if you you can connect the current 
um, property to sewer, and then it would be a fairly simple um, job to, if they demolish that property, to connect that property, uh, the, a new pro like a new construction to sewer, and then the second lot just run the line up. But nothing has been initiated yet, right? Like, Correct. The subdivision. Well, no, so the system is in failure, and I think that's a key component. And and I think the um, the prolonging it because of the potential to subdivide isn't really an, an, a thing because, like Rika explained, they can do both sewer hookup as well as on-site septic and and still subdivide in the late future. I think to wait for the property to be subdivided would be doing a disservice because there is a failed system. Um, right. So. I think like Rika mentioned, they have until the end of May, but I think it's beneficial to have them or have him come in front of the board, potentially even in as early as April to say, this is what is going to take place. Like Rika mentioned to get an installer, whether it's a septic or whether it's a sewer hookup. I mean, people are booking out pretty far in advance. And I think the main thing is, is we don't want come May to still be in the same position we are now. Um, we wanna see some progression. I'd even take it a step further and say that they he hasn't met the the nine month order as far as documentation or giving us a path forward. I'd say we'd want that path forward by next meeting. I mean, why can't we have him if he's if he thinks now that we're ready to he's ready to connect or he has a plan? Um, I think we need that right away by waiting to the 18 month period. I, I think we are setting ourselves up for extending and pushing and and, and reasons for it, but. Do we have the ability to request him since he missed this meeting to have them come next month and provide us with a, an update and a plan for uh, what their designs or their sewer hookup planning is going to be? I, I agree with Richard because he, he failed with the, to do the first part, right? So, so he's already not complying, right? Correct. So definitely. And so we can, um, if the board can make that motion, we can send a letter um, via certified mail and via email to the owner to make them aware um, of that order. Good. All right. Anybody mind if I make a motion? Go ahead. Please do. Make a motion regarding the 770 Washington Street uh, failed septic system regarding the letter dated December 22nd. The board had requested information and an update by nine months, which is now for what the uh, soil testing as well as the design and or the initial uh, initiation of a sewer hookup. Um, without that being done at that nine month period, the board would request the owner to um, attend our December, did we say December? 21st. Meeting. Um, to provide us with an update as well as a path forward to uh, ensure that the system is repaired or hookup has been initiated in advance of the, the 18 month period. I'll second that. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Any other comments, additions? All right, then we'll take a vote, Carol. Aye. Mona? Aye. And I also, three, zero, zero. Thank you. Let's um, be able to get that moving. All right, uh, next on our agenda, 750, a bit late housing, uh, the 653 Washington Street, Unit A. Uh, just to yes. update on that. Can we do yes, so the, the Board of Health, um, provided an extension um, to the owners of the property to do the updates, um, to do the repairs, I should say, um, from the, my order letter. Um, I, they were going to have a court date, um, but the occupant got legal representation and it has been requested that the case get moved to housing court. So they have either have or are waiting on another court date. Um, so the repairs have not yet been made. Um, I know the owner is on the call, Mr. Fascinello. Um, he can speak to it. I also did reach out to DEP regarding asbestos on their end. Um, there is no high risk to the occupant um, with the asbestos because it was trace amounts and it because it's in the mastic 
um, which is still in good repair. Um, so on their end, um, there is no de definitive timeline. Um, I did reach out to the state um, community sanitation program to get their thoughts about the next steps. Um, and they felt that um, the Board of Health could, the Board of Health has the authority to make the decisions and grant more time, but they recommended that this um, potentially just go to court and let the court decide um, an appropriate timeline um, for the repairs. Okay, uh, Mr. Fasnello, is there any additional information you want to add to? Yes, um, you know, after uh, two months, we were all excited because we we're going to get court date. And that was on October 28th at 11 o'clock. And we, it was a Zoom meeting at the Rentham District Court. And we, we joined it. And they said, oh, your case has been transferred to the Brockton Court Housing Court. And we were a little confused, but you know it's a course to court. So what we found out is that the occupiers, I'll call them that because they're not tenants, the occupiers waited to the last day on the 27th, uh, October 27th, to file for the transfer, knowing, now this has been two months because we started this procedure in, on, on uh, September 1, our date was October 28th. This gives them another bunch of time. Anyway, I called the Brockton Housing Court. I, I really had never heard of that. And uh, they explained to me that um, evictions, and this has to be an eviction, even though they're not really tenants, um, have uh, the right to go to housing court. And they have retained uh, a pro bono attorney who knows that the Brockton Housing Court is loaded and is way behind. I called them up anyway, just to find out. Uh, they explained to me that we are now in the queue. And I said, well, what does that mean? You know, we need to do this. It's been, you know, coming on three months. They said, um, you're not alone, but you're in the queue and you'll get a letter. All right, so that was that. However, on November 8th, um, we get a call from the tenants downstairs saying that there was a, an altercation going on and um, actually had ended. Um, and according to that tenant, and this is hearsay, is that the occupiers of apartment A, one occupier, for some reason, broke two of the people's windows downstairs, the tenants downstairs, smashed their windows, threw a stone statuette at them, um, threw, ripped out the screens in her apartment and threw them in, in, at him, and then came outside and tore the doors off the wooden bulkhead. And, um, okay, so this is from the tenant now telling me all this. So this is just hearsay. Um, I got a call from the Walpole police saying, we'd just like to let you know that your bulkhead is now opened and somebody could fall in it. And um, just to let you know, which we took care of that. We put, we braced that up and put a, um, a uh, covering on to on the bulkhead. Um, but again, this is all hearsay. I ordered a police report from the Walpole police so that we have something that's real because I'll be bringing this to court if I ever get a date from the housing uh, people in Brockton. So what, what can I tell you? Any, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them for you. I, I really have no questions. I, I feel feel for you. It's uh, 
painful process. And I know court system is, is, is not making things easier by any means. Well, one thing the police did say is that um, she was taken away. And we've gone by, we go by the house every day. Um, I'm not sure there's anybody in there. Um, we haven't seen any activity. And until I get the police report, I really don't know what's, what's going on. Um, hesitant to even, you know, go near the place there for, you know, I can see myself getting into trouble. Just be, I, I need people with me to go near them. Yeah, I would recommend you, you have someone escorting you, Mr. Fezzanel. Well, usually my wife is with me, but uh, she's busy tonight. Um, it, it, my problem is that if she's assaultive, uh, that's another dimension. I mean, property damage is one thing, but if they're injuring people, and my tenant downstairs said it, it only missed his head by uh, a couple of inches. And um, was that reported? A, I'm sorry. Was that reported to the police? I don't know. I don't have their report yet. I guess it, you know, you from our, our, from story. our. I'm sorry, Mona? I said you could kill someone throwing a stone at their head. You know, that's. Absolutely. And it, that, that's, that needs to be reported to the local police department. They were there. The police did come. So I guess the, um, as Rick had mentioned, the the next step would have been, you know, we are the repairs which seem to be mounting against you um, were something that we were talking about having those done according to a certain schedule. It looks like the the courts are probably our best bet, and and to not um, impose any additional restrictions or requirements on you until we hear what the decision from the court would be at this point. What I'll try to do, and we have of course now retained a lawyer because she has one. Um, at the housing court, they have a two-step process. This makes it even longer. The first step is called mediation. I don't know what we could mediate with them because they're not paying anything and they're using the utilities. And so there's nothing we can offer them they don't already have. And after the mediation, if the mediation doesn't work, then you get another court date for the actual trial. I mean, it's unbelievable how complicated this is. So, and to jump in, when, when I had meant by court, so we, unfortunately, um, we, we do have a housing code that, that we have to comply with. And in Massachusetts, um, a lot of the responsibility does fall on the owner. So if our next step is because we don't have compliance with that, and we understand why Mr. Fessnell has explained what we would do is we would file in housing court. So that's what we, we go, like, I don't want to say regularly, but that is the Board of Health Avenue is housing court. So we would get in that same queue um, to go to court with the, the Fasanellos to make get the repairs done through that housing court. So in a way, it would extend the time because we will let the courts decide what is a reasonable amount of time to get the repairs done. And as Mr. Fasanello said, it would be the same steps. We usually start with mediation um, because at the end of the day, anyone wants compliance. Um, that's what we want. Um, and so it is a little bit of a longer process. The courts are backed up, but it would give the court, the courts would make the decisions on an appropriate time frame, time frame to make the repairs um, and let them decide based on um, the, the, the occupant situation, um, the repairs that need to be made, let the, them decide on the time frame. And there is a chance that by the time we get through the court process, um, Mr. Fasnell has already gotten through it himself with the occupants and we're going to be at a different stage, but at least um, then we are going through our next steps um, based on the code that we have to enforce. And what court would that be? That would... It would be the same, the Brockton, we go through the Brockton the, the housing Brockton court. court, it's the same one. Yep, that's for all our housing cases, if there's any issues with compliance that we go through housing court. There's now a housing court um, 
every community has access to a housing court um, in Massachusetts. Um, and so the one that we go to would be Brockton. Okay. That, that, that helps, I appreciate that. So it looks like that would probably, that would be our, our approach, um, getting okay. you behind and, and, um, and with, any, with any hope, Mr. Fasnell has already solved the problem before we get to that point, but um, I agree. Well, they may be gone. For all I know, I, we're going to have to check and see if they've actually left. I noticed um, when I went by in the evening, there were no lights on in that apartment. So maybe they're gone. Yeah, maybe it's a good opportunity for the police to do a wellness check or something to, to be able to, to check to see. So. Yes, definitely. Do we need to make a move? Yeah, we'll definitely make a motion. Uh, Moni, you want to make a motion? Sure. Sure. I'll make a motion in regards to the housing case update 653 Washington Street, Unit A. Um, unfortunately, since the case um, now has moved to the um, Brockton Housing Court, um, since the occupants have a representative now, the Board of Health um, recommends um, that we would leave it to the um, Brockton Housing Court to decide in a appropriate time frame for the owner to make the repairs? You would, uh, that's something you'd be initiating through the Board of Health, correct? Right. Okay, great. Motion to made. Do we have a second? I'll second it. I'll second. Motion's made and seconded. You, anything further? Additions? Ricky, do we cover everything? Yes, I think so. So we'll, we'll start that process then on our end to file in court. Um, and then hopefully Mr. Fasnell can also update us and um, perhaps the tenants or the occupants have moved out um, and then we won't have to move forward. Absolutely, great point, yeah. Cross your fingers. Fasnell, please, uh, please keep <laughs> us informed uh, on your progress and we, we hope the best for you. Saying that we will vote, uh, Carol? Aye. Mona? Aye. And I also, 300. Best of luck, sir. Thank you. All right. Of Last thing on our agenda is the 605 Elm Street site plan approval. And we have a lot of things on the agenda. There's actually, in addition to this one, there's two more that were add ons. That's right, the second email. Sorry about that. I'm not off the hook that easy. Okay, we'll start with uh, the 605 Elm Street. Yes, yeah, so this is a site plan approval. Um, the Stigmatine Fathers bought this property um, and they are hoping to renovate it, um, do some work on the exterior, such as relocating the driveway and some utilities, um, do some landscaping. Um, it's currently a 10 bedroom home. They wanna reduce that to five bedrooms and then add an addition of four bedrooms. It is, it does have an on-site septic. Um, it was um, installed in March of this year for a 10 bedroom. So based on their, the, the plans, um, it would, they would actually end up having nine bedrooms instead of 10, so the septic system would um, would still meet that design. I have a question, is this a rental property? No, so it was purchased. Oh, okay. There, there are two properties on site. One was the Dutton, original Dutton Estate and the other was the carriage house and both have bedrooms. Would you know which one it is? So it's the, it's the estate, it's that large one. It's not the carriage house. Uh -huh. The carriage house has a separate system. Okay. Okay. Big... Anything we are concerned about? I would say not at this time, um, especially because the, the septic was already approved and, and upgraded. So they bought, they had upgraded the septic when they bought it originally, or is that done for the prior owner? No, so it was, um, it was upgraded um, after they bought it. Okay. Interesting. All right, any, uh, I wanna make a motion? I'll make a motion um, regarding the request from the Stigma Team Fathers at 605 Elm Street. Um, there's, the Board of Health has no concerns with their site plan. I'll second that. 
Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any other comments? And you'll vote, Carol. Aye. And Lorna. Aye. And I also. Motion passes 300. And then we will continue on our new list. My apologies, I don't have that pulled up. So the next one is the Lincoln Estates. It's a definitive 24 lot subdivision. Um, and it's on the northerly side of Lincoln Road and off the end of Deerfield Drive. Um, and they're looking to develop that um, land into 24 single family houses. And the, there were some revisions um, submitted in October that were just to address comments from the planning board and the town engineer. Um, we were, it was originally um, not going on the agenda based on um, when the public hearing was, um, but the planning board has requested um, uh, comments from the Board of Health to make sure that nothing has, has changed on there and just um, to reiterate the, the previous comments that um, it's still approved. Um, and then the, as, as I noted previously, um, some of the lots are within the 100 foot buffer zone, uh, but the engineer has instruction will happen within that. Um, and we last saw this um, at our October 5th meeting. Um, again, um, the, any of the revisions, um, our comments are based on comments from the planning board and the town engineer. Um, and we still have not done any soil testing, um, but they are aware that that will need to be done prior to um, anyone moving in. So we really have no concerns. Right. And true? just to reiterate your previous comments. Then we could, then, what, then why don't Cor we just correct. do that? Um, so I can do that. Carol? Um, regarding the site plan approved, no, the definitive 24 sub but subdivision called Lincoln Estates, the Board of Health has no additional concerns and re repeats what we had said before. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. Now we go to vote, Carol. Aye. Mona. Aye. Aye also. Three, zero, zero. Thank you for that one. And then next, let's see, we have, is it the uh, Ash Brown Holdings? Is this the South Street? Correct. Yes. Um, and, and same thing, um, they just wanted updated um, comments from the Board of Health. Um, Ian Brown Landscaping is adding um, an additional building onto their property. Um, um, and there were revisions and they were to address comments from the planning board, fire department, and the town engineer. Um, to help some type of hazardous. Um, so they will. So I think I'm going to jump in because Rika's cutting out. So um, if, if oh. you got that. So again, the revisions were to address comments from the planning board and fire department and the town engineer. The additional component is they are going to be storing toxic and hazardous material on site. So I know the previous motion made on September 7th said that um, the Board of Health had no comments at this time. We would just want to incorporate in if they house um, the, the threshold of, of content for hazardous material, they would be required to, to file a hazardous and toxic permit with our department. Gotcha. Okay. I'll make a motion regarding the 272-274 South Street. The Planning board request for comments. We reiterate what was mentioned prior, but also making sure the applicant is aware that any materials that exceed thresholds for toxic or hazardous materials must properly be registered with the town. I'll second that. Okay. Motion to be made and seconded. Any other comments? Carol? Aye. Mona? Aye. And I also, 300, motion passes. And then last one. That's it, right? So that was just the agenda, additional agenda. Okay. Just double check. So I guess the question is, is, does, is everyone still okay with meeting the December 21st, that Tuesday? Sure. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Sounds good. All right. Um, 
if there's nothing else for the board to any other updates, any other um, nothing else to address, then we will make a uh, we'll entertain a motion to to end for the evening. I will so move and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Same to everyone. I'll second that. Perfect. And I will third it and we'll vote. Carol? Aye. Mona? Aye. Aye also. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Good, Good night. night. Bye. Thank you. Good night.